Hey, what's up all you art geeks? Today we are going to talk a little bit about what you do when your oil painting fails. This happens to me more than I care to admit. Having a failed oil painting is a very excruciating experience. Usually what happens, this is the rundown. This is what happens to me when I have a failed painting. I will be in denial for a little bit. I'll keep painting into it while it's wet, wet into wet until it just goes nowhere. I will get frustrated. I'll put it aside and I'll think, hey, I can fix this the next day after it dries. And usually what happens is the failed painting gets just a little bit better. It never quite gets to the place where you want it to. Usually a failed painting is just destined to be a failed painting. There are always exceptions to that rule. I've had paintings where I think it's going to be failed and I find a way through it, but there's always some sort of underlying fail to a painting no matter what you try to do to fix it. And this painting that we have here today, I would say is a really good example of a painting that I thought was going to work. I had this interesting concept of breaking up the face into two parts, having a very abstract, colorful part and a impressionistic part with subtle colors. And that was my general idea. I didn't take that idea much further than that. That was the whole idea I had. And it worked out okay, but I feel like what happened was after playing with it too much, it started to lose something that it had in the earlier stages. So watch along with me. Let me know if, what you think. If the, there's a particular part to this painting that looks better than the final end result, I'm curious because this is one of those paintings where I've never been maybe 100% satisfied. It did turn out okay because it does have a lot of great texture at the end of the day from all the work I put into it. For me, it felt like it was a failure in some aspects. So that's what we're gonna talk about today is what should you do when you have an oil painting that fails? Now, before we get into that, I wanna quickly mention that I do have a Patreon account with a bunch of tutorials. If you wanna learn how to oil paint like me, I do a lot of portrait painting tutorials, a lot of beginner tutorials and everything in between. So check that out. Also have art downloads for you. Now back to what we're talking about. I was curious to see what ChatGPT said on the subject. I love asking ChatGPT these silly questions about art just to see what it says. And most of what it says is very generic, but it always leads me into some great topics. So I asked ChatGPT, what should I do when I have an oil painting that fails? And it says, well, dealing with a failed oil painting can be disappointing, but it's important to approach it with a positive mindset and use it as an opportunity for learning and improvement. And then it gets into some steps. We have some steps from ChatGPT. How many do we have? We have 10 steps. This 10 step program to dealing with failure. That should be a group session for any painter. It's just a bunch of painters that have failed and need to talk about it. Let's get that started somehow, right? Okay. The first point that it has here is analyze the painting. Okay. Well, this painting in particular, this one's a great example. That's why we're talking about this today. This painting is a failure because I felt like it took me First, it took me too long. There was just too much effort to get it to a place that really didn't change it much. The first layer was almost as successful as the fifth. The only difference is being there's a little bit of nice subtle color variation and there's some nice textural elements that I build up through those four or five layers of working on this little eight by 10. The second step that Chad GPT has is identify mistakes or issues. Well, we just talked about that. So I'm gonna skip that one. Number three, learn from mistakes. Well, I think we naturally do that but with this painting, I learned that I need to maybe think it out a little bit more, think about my approach a little bit more in that first layer to save myself some time in the layers to come. Because if I would have approached this knowing how important it was for that composition to have those soft, subtle transitions from light to dark on the upper left to lower right, that would have been something I would have focused on doing correctly on the first layer, but it just didn't work out. All right, the next one on the list is seeking feedback. And I think that one is definitely definitely useful if you're looking towards the right people. For me personally, I don't like a lot of feedback. I don't mind it, but I ignore a good chunk. I'd say 90% of feedback I hear is something I just, I hear it, I'll consider it, and then I will ignore it because my particular work is very specific. And I feel like if you're not in the figurative realm, if you're not working on portraits or you're not working on abstraction, there's a really good chance that maybe your feedback won't be useful, but I do listen to it. I will, you definitely need to listen to the feedback, but you have to decide for yourself if that 
is gonna be advice you take. The next one on the list is take a break. And I agree with this completely. There are so many times when I get frustrated with a painting, it feels like a failure and I just keep working it and working it. I work into the wet paint over and over again and it's getting absolutely nowhere. The best thing I have found to do is just stop, step away, let it dry and come back to it the next day. That is some of the best advice I should ever give myself is to just stop early. The next one is experiment and explore. So when you have a failure, you should experiment and explore. That's one of its steps. Yeah, I guess why not? You don't want to get stuck in your ways too much. So if you do feel like you're having a failure of a painting, that doesn't really necessarily mean that you need to explore new ideas, but maybe doing some experiments and exploring could help because it'll take you away from what you were thinking about. And then once you revisit what you were failing at, you can fix the mistakes and get back into a rhythm with your current projects. All right, what is next? We got make corrections. Okay, that's self-explanatory. We can go to the next one. Start over. I hate this step. <laughs> I hate this step. I have started over with a painting. I don't start with a brand new canvas though. What I will do is I will just repaint over it. I will use some of the existing painting usually, unless the composition is just so incorrect, I will completely start over. But normally I will start over in a sense where I'll use the composition I have and just completely start from scratch as far as colors I use. I think usually what I do when I start over is I just get a whole nother photo to use for reference and just completely start with a whole new idea and not really revisit that one because I feel like it's a fail. I learned so much from failing from that one that I just don't even want to bother with that particular photo ever again. Next is keep a positive attitude. Well, as artists, I know this can be tough. Keeping a positive attitude is, is tricky. There are times, especially in the winter time here in Iowa, when you've worked all day on something and you just want to throw it away, you want to punch it. The thing I've done that helps with my attitude, I think this is a previous step. Yeah, take a break. Taking a break really can help your attitude come back around, whether you take the break for the whole day, you take a walk for a half hour, all these things can really help to bring your attitude back around to a, into a positive place. Because sometimes it just takes an, a new set of eyes to look at something and see what you're missing or see what you're doing wrong. Sometimes that can take a day. Sometimes it can take a week. If you know you're just going into a bad place mentally, you just need to stop and do something else in general. I think that's the best way to get a positive attitude going. Move Move on is the next one. This is my favorite one, definitely. It says, except that not every painting will be a success. That is hard to do, isn't it? This painting, for example, is a great one where I've had plenty of paintings where just like this one where they're floating in white space. They're very simple and have been very successful, but this one just never quite got to that level. We all have A plus work. We all have D minus work. We all have Fs. We have C pluses. I would call this painting a nice, strong C plus. That's about where I put this painting. And I did decide to move on. I could have kept going. I could have kept adding more texture to it. I could have added some more hours to it, but I thought, no, this thing is done. I'm just gonna move on. Okay, well, those were the 10 steps to helping with failure when you're a painter. Did I miss anything? Are there any tricks that you have for failure that help you get through any failed paintings. We all have our unique ways of getting through these moments in our lives when we have a bad painting. Again, check out my Patreon account if you'd like to learn some more about my painting process. I think there's something in there for just about anybody. Again, art downloads for you to print out, put on your wall. So thank you so much for checking out another one of my videos, you art geeks. I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.